Hey, it's Mike with The Daily BM. On this episode, we talk about BFR therapy and dry needling, two things that I just recently experienced and have had great results with. So hope you enjoy this Man Cave Monday episode of The Daily BM. And thanks for listening. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Good morning, fuckers. Welcome to a new week. It is the first day of July at the Daily BM. Mikey, what is going on? Hey, everybody. What's happening? (laughs) Oh, man. I'll tell you what. It's vacation week. Booyah. I know. Booyah. So as people are listening to our episode, we are on the beach or in the pool or wherever the hell we are, right? Actually, uh, I think yeah. you. I think you actually beat me uh, this week. So we are pre-recording our episodes this week, guys. Um, a little bit more so. So just uh, sit back, enjoy during your Fourth of July weekends, and enjoy the banter and the bullshit that we bring every day. And actually, wait, what did you say in our title and our social media? What was it? I don't, it, I don't it, even remember. You don't even remember. <laughs> You're like, I don't know. I just made some shit up. Um, it was something about you know, mostly stupid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we, we bring informative moments of clarity and information yeah. information about that. but mostly stupid <laughs> but mostly stupid but you know today's subject we're not it's not really stupid this is something that you've been um going to which i think is really cool uh it's bfr therapy and dry needling so yes. um i don't know i don't know anything about this stuff so it's going to be something something man new. cave monday edition we're going to be talking yes about blood flow restriction therapy and dry needling. Uh, So I've been having some issues, you know, throughout my body as most people my age start to have, especially with sports injuries and other things. Um, And I recently went to a physical therapist and they suggested that I try blood flow restriction therapy. So, and dry needling. So basically what, blood flow restriction therapy is as the name describes it's the reducing the blood flow to the muscle while you're doing a workout so in my hmm. case because i was having some knee issues um what they did was is they put pressure cuffs on both of my quads and then they inflated them to 65 percent, so or 65 percent restriction of blood flow so where it was reducing 65 percent of the blood flow to the muscle hmm. the the science behind it is basically by reducing the blood flow, it creates um, a s- environment that causes your muscle to have to work much harder um, than it would normally with full blood flow. And so you can use lighter weights. And by using lighter weights, it allows your joints to not have as much impact um, on the, you know, during the exercise. So you're not, you're not putting as much strain on the joint but the muscle is getting fatigued much, much faster at a lower weight. And it was uncomfortable at first um, when they inflated it. Cause it's like having a pressure cuff on your arm, you know, when you're getting your blood drawn. Right. Uh, it's the same premise as that. So basically, you know, they inflate it and then they just leave it inflated and they put one on each leg and then you get up and you, you know, my first exercise I performed was just squats, uh, you know, weighted squats. And, you know, I only had to use uh, 40 pounds instead of the much heavier weight that I normally do because um, it was a lot more challenging to do. And then, you know, the next set of exercises was a split squat, which that was extremely challenging. And the fact that, you know, your, your muscles are already fatigued from the original squat and now you're doing split squats. So they were like, they were screaming at this point. And, Then the final exercise was the uh, uh, Bulgarian squat, split squat, where you have one leg elevated in the back and you're going Mm -hmm. down, which that was extremely weird because when you put your leg in that position, my foot was starting to go numb because now (laughs) my foot was elevated up. So the blood had to go down and up. So I didn't have gravity helping me out, um, you know, to get the blood flow down. So my foot would go numb a little bit while I was doing the exercise. So that was a unique experience. But let me tell you, like I normally do all those exercises as part of my regular workout routine. And Mm -hmm. I don't go 
crazy heavy with the weight because I'm worried about my knees buckling, you know, I'm worried about injuries. So I don't typically get really sore from working out. Um, I do get sore, but not like really sore. After this BFR training, the next like week, my legs were so incredibly sore. It was insane. Like I was just like, it felt like I, I moved like 10 times the weight. <laughs> really? Yeah. So I was like pretty shocked at the effectiveness of it um, as far as getting results from it. Um, and it's something I'll probably go back and do a couple more times for physical therapy. Um, now I went in because I was having, so the issue I was having with my knee was I was getting like an acute pain behind the knee pad and, or behind the knee cap. And it would feel like it's locking when I would move. And then it would get really stiff when I was sitting for a long period of time. So what they determined is, is that I actually, you have a fatty pad that sits behind your, um, what is it? The, uh, platella tendon. Okay. Is that what it's called? I believe yeah. so. So it sits behind there. And basically what it does is it keeps that tendon from slipping into the joint and getting frayed or, you know, messed up. But what happens when that pad gets pinched, when you like hyperextend or you do a movement that causes that fat pad to get, to get inflamed, Mm -hmm. is now it starts to put pressure um, not only on the kneecap, but also on the, or not on the knee, but also on the tendon, which causes that popping, you know, locking and other issues. So what they recommended for that was the next thing, which was dry needling, which is the Western version of acupuncture. Hmm. The primary difference between dry needling and acupuncture is that, you know, acupuncture relies a lot on like um, meridians in the body for mm -hmm. like your different points of, you know, like, oh, we're going to put it between your toe because this is a nerve that goes through your thing and it's, you know, your chi and your um, your chakras, you know, basically. So it's all the spiritual. There's a lot of spiritualness to it. And there's a lot of like, oh, this will make your digestion better and things like that. Western medicine is more like direct. So they put it directly into the, you know, fat pad in my case, or they put multiple needles around it. And they're about, I would say an inch to an inch and a half in length. And then they're, they're, they're the diameter of like a insulin needle. Okay. So, you know, it goes pretty deep, which is pretty wild. Um, it actually, you know, he touched the bone <laughs> a couple of times um, <laughs> I bet he when, did. He, when he went in there and <laughs> it, should I be it jealous? <laughs> yeah. It didn't um, hurt per se. It felt – sometimes I felt a little uncomfortable, and sometimes you could definitely right. feel like, ooh, that, there's, a, there's a nerve there or something. But what it does is by penetrating that you know, area, it causes um, local inflammation to bring more blood flow to the area, which then clears it out quicker. And I got to say, after my first treatment of that, like I did that before the, the uh, blood flow restriction therapy. Right. Um, after that very first treatment, I noticed like a 90% improvement the very next day. Really? And yeah, it was huge. Like it was a huge difference. I was shocked at like the level of like how much difference it made. Um, I've now had three therapies of that and my knee pain is completely gone. I have no knee pain period, whatever. Um, you know, the yesterday they actually cleared me to start going ahead and running again. Uh, they okay. said, you know, take it slow and work your way up. Don't go, you know, don't do full send off day one because that'll just lead to re injury. Right. And um, it, it worked really, really well. And they basically, you know, they insert the needle all the way through the fatty, fat, fatty pad into the muscle or into the tendon, and it just stimulates that area. So it was a pretty unique experience um, that I didn't know anything about. I mean, I've had acupuncture before, you know, where I went in and they're like, I was, when I had my knee problem. They put a couple in my knee, but then they also put some in my forehead and my ear and my foot and my hand. And, you know, they put the little needles and they were very, they weren't deep. They were very like superficial, like basically just in like the skin and the, in the pore. Like it wasn't like a deep at all. Like maybe just a, a just centimeter. A tip. It was just a tip. Yeah. <laughs> but those helped as well, but I'm not 100% sure if it was not a placebo effect where I was just like, oh, I feel better because I did this as opposed to actually helping. 
Um, and that's probably where the debate comes in between, you know, acupuncture and deep needle, you know, dry needling. Um, is one is, you know, specific deep into the muscle or, or joint or tendon, not joint, but muscle tendon or, you know, fat pad that's having the issue. And the other right. one is more in line with your energies and your, you know, the flow, the natural flow of the body. Um, I've done both and I've had success with both, but I was really impressed with the dry needling. So if you're having joint pains, aches and pains, it might be good to go see a physical therapist first before, you know, you go under the knife, so to speak. Uh, cause they recommended I had full knee replacement on both my knees, uh, four years ago. Um, and I decided that I wanted to try other things before I get there. So when you said you had, you got recommended for full knee replacement, what was the reason for the knee replacement? I mean, was, I mean, all your tendons are fine and all your arthritis. ligaments, right? Oh, you yeah, had arthritic knee. knee. Yeah. Uh, gotcha. Okay. So different scenarios. Yeah. So people that have injuries, obviously like, like for instance, me, that's going to have to have surgery on the meniscus. Uh, you can't avoid that because I have a frayed mop meniscus. I have know? no idea. I'm not a doctor on that, so I don't know. But I mean, yeah, there's I, been. I'm just curious what the what your people would say next time you go and going, hey, you know what? You know, if you have an injury, I'm just curious. Maybe bring that up. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the uh, I don't know what they say, but I can ask. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely ask and then report back. Um, I don't know what the meniscus with the meniscus frays or tears. Um. Is yeah, I was gonna say because they're because they're totally because I mean they're, they're you know the way mine for instance I'll just use mine as an example mine was basically frayed like a mop top you know so it got frayed like a rope would fray yeah um, it didn't it, ne it didn't necessarily tear it frayed open so right which is which is not uncommon you know what I mean but so, but they got to go in there and smooth it out and clean it out you know and get it back to the way it is um which. You know, it's still, I, I don't, he wasn't really specific. I mean, I would assume it's because the recovery time is a lot less, um, that it's not as quite as bad as a complete tear, obviously across the tendon itself, you yeah. know, because then, yeah. then you're, then you're talking about reattachment and all that other kind of shit that goes on, you know? Yeah. I think if it's a complete tear, then you have to have the reattachment pretty much. But what I just did a quick Google search on is if it's just phrase and things of that nature um you can rehab it through physical therapy and the recovery time is usually six to eight weeks right you're listening to the daily bm um, yeah and, and he and he thinks that just based on my you know um just on how i am and things of that nature that the minimal two the most six is what he was thinking yeah. Um, you know, but that just depends on how fast my body recovers from it. Right. So, you know, I mean, that's all up in the air. I just, so I'm just counting myself, you know, out of commission on lower body stuff for six weeks, you know, and then we <laughs> go from there. I almost thought your mug was shooting me a bird because it froze frame on me. <laughs> I thought you no, had one of those that's too. It. No, it's Bush Gardens. And, uh, yeah, the way it did it, it like made it streaked. Um, no, I wish crazy. I had one of those because that'd be so, great to have a meeting. So, what separates that from acupuncture then, you know, this dry needling? What, what's the difference between the two? I mean, they seem similar. Well, like I said, it's, it's a Western medicine approach to Eastern medicine. So basically it takes all of the mysticism out of it, you know, like they don't apply mm -hmm. it in your toes or your feet because that's where, you know, your kidneys memory is stored or however they say in acupuncture, you know, it's directly applied to the joint or muscle or tendon that it's affected. It's not, you know, throughout the whole body where it might be, hey, can you put, you know, an acupuncture needle in the side of my neck for weight loss? Because you, you can go acupuncture for weight loss and they'll put needles in certain areas on your body and then you'll lose weight. Now, again, I don't know if it's a placebo effect or there's actually something there that, you know, triggers the our nervous system to respond because we're, you know, very complex creatures as far as how we're designed and built. And we don't know the entire extent of the human body, you know, right. We don't, we don't know how, you know, a tweaking one nerve can a affect the entire body. Does that make sense? So no, it makes total sense. It's, it's basically just, they cut all the mysticism out of it and then they do direct treatment 
and it seems to be deeper too. Like it goes deeper than acupuncture from, you know, my, my, uh, experience. Yeah. Cause I've never had, I've never had acupuncture either. I've never had anything like that. So that's yeah. why I'm super curious about this. Cause I'm like, man, I've never had this kind of stuff done. Um, mm -hmm. and what's the, how long does the procedure usually take? Like 20 minutes. That's it. You're just in and out in 20. Yeah, with the acro with the uh, dry needling, yeah, it's quick. I mean, it's not hard and what at about all. The, what about the BFR? The BFR is just a workout. So, like, however long the workout is, if it's twenty minute workout, it's twenty minutes. Oh, okay. If it's Thirty minute workout, it's thirty minutes. Like, you just do a full workout for whatever that system is. Like, whatever whatever you're having problems with. So, like, since mine was knee, you know, I did um, like four sets of squats, uh, four sets of uh, uh, split squats per side. Um, four sets of Bulgarian split squats per side. And then I did, uh, uh, I did something else, but I can't remember what it was. Um, rub your wiener. Yeah, pretty much. For sure. Blood that's flow. what it was for blood yeah. flow restriction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. I said, I was, when I was there, I was like, Hey, can you put one of these around my neck so I can feel more like home? <laughs> can you please yeah a little tighter please a little tighter yeah there you are yeah. there's the spot there's the spot <laughs> too funny man that's awesome yeah. man so I, I you know i'm gonna definitely have to uh look into this stuff man a little bit more man for even myself moving on down the road right now i don't really have except for the injury i don't really have mm -hmm. any particular pains let, now let me ask you you can do this in all part before you know we cut out of here is there is there other parts of the body that you can do just besides the knee i mean is it like everything's pretty much on the table or is there limitations to what you can and can't pretty do? Much, I think what, I think what dry needling is pretty much any, any joint or muscle group. Um, so like a bicep, a forearm, yeah. a tendon for tendonitis. Yeah. I mean, that might be good. Yeah, right? like, I'm going back for uh, my Achilles um, to have some dry needling done on my Achilles tendon to, because of having some issues there. So I was going to have that done. Um, uh, so that's yeah with dry needling that's as far as i know on that now with acupuncture they have a lot more treatment stuff for that like they can do osteoporosis osteoporosis can't talk no nope, um, you had it right they, you can had do, right. they can do like helping with smoke stop smoking they can do with um aches and pains uh they can do eating disorders i mean there's a million different things that you can get acupuncture treatment for um that you know, they don't really do for dry needling is again, it's Western versus, you know, Eastern, Eastern methodolo or methodology. methodology. Right. So let me ask two, yeah. two questions. So, uh, you said different groups. So I would assume like you could do a, the, the, the forearm tendon for tendonitis into the lower right. part of the bicep, things yep. like that. So does the pricing vary based on the body group or, or the muscle group or anything of that nature, or is it pretty much standard pricing all the way across the board? So I don't know what it is across the board for other areas because it's just a flat rate place that I go. Um, oh, okay. For the entire PT session, basically. And how much um, is that per session? It it was pricey for me because uh, my insurance did not doesn't kick in until I spend sixteen hundred bucks. So it was two hundred and sixty bucks a session, a one hour <laughs> session. Yeah, it's a nice price now, tag, you can, man. You can do it in thirty. You can do it thirty minute sessions. Um, so it's half that, and then you just don't it's do as much. Bucks. It's hundred thirty bucks yeah. in thirty minutes. Yeah, but I mean, if it you know fixes the problem, makes it go away, and takes you out of pain, what's that worth? Yeah, well, uh, anytime. You know, and it's, yeah, a lot, yeah. and it's a lot cheaper than a six thousand dollars surgery. You know, with, yeah, that, you could have right. complications or or, or die like that. So. Yeah, you could. I mean, there's always yeah. that. There's always that chance. I mean, anytime you get you know put under, there's always that chance you. One hundred percent. Yeah. So, I mean, that's you, just, you could be, you, you could be put under and they chop off the wrong leg on accident because they get your chart mixed up. And then just <laughs> like that, I became a millionaire. Yeah. One legged millionaire pirate. I'm a one legged, I'm a one legged fucking peg leg pirate, but I'm a rich pirate, bitch. Yeah. So, so yeah, I've asked our listeners if you've had any experience with either one of those two. If you'd like to write in and share your experience, that'd be great. Yeah, and, and, uh, and, and you find you somewhere. It yeah, and, and trust me, you get what you pay for. So don't go to some low budget place for like thirty bucks because you're probably yeah. not going to be happy with the result. And you know, well, or mm -hmm. <laughs> things well, of that again, that's that's my <laughs> that was on my medical insurance. So I don't know what it'd be like for somebody that just has like a like a copay insurance or right because because my insurance is basically I have I have a sixteen hundred dollar limit per year, and then everything over sixteen hundred bucks is covered one hundred percent. 
Gotcha. So I don't have to do the 80, 20. I don't have to do the co-pays. Right. You just have a flat rate and then boom, you made yeah. it, you meet, then, you meet it and everything's covered at a hundred percent. Gotcha. And then my, my insurance is also what you call it's HSA compli- compatible, mm-hmm. which means uh, it's a health savings account. So basically Correct. what I do is, is every, because, and this is a whole nother topic, but <laughs> because we're business owners, I set up an HSA because you can write up to six thousand dollars a year. I think it's actually seventy two hundred this year, but my, it was six thousand previously that you can write off of your taxes if you deposit into an H- a health savings account HSA, mm-hmm. and you can pull from that for any type of qualified medical expense. So it's anything that's related to medical. Um, so basically, it's a good savings account that's tax tax free. Uh, you don't get taxed on it, and you can take it off of your income. Uh, much like a retirement account, and then you can use that for expenses. So it's basically not, in my mind, it's not like I'm spending two sixty three out of my pocket for this paycheck. It's money that I've saved up over the years in this health savings account for this purpose. Um, and you know, there's certain exercise equipment and stuff like that you can buy. You know, so like there's things that I've I've purchased um for rehab that I was got just I just got a note from my doctor or my physical therapist saying I needed this piece of equipment. And then I was able to buy it through my HSA and use that, that money for that purchase because it was part of my rehab. So there's, there's a lot of benefits for that. So that's why I chose that health plan because with the copay, you don't have the ability to stock that money away. And in reality, like how often do you get sick? You know, at all ages, not, not that, not a lot. Like, you know, like I very rarely, if ever spend $1,600 a year, on medical expenses yeah knock on wood but i mean knock on, you know, wood, I spend, knock on wood because i still get the advantages of the discounted you know health insurance price at the doctor's office so like when i go get my labs done it's like four dollars you know so it's the same you know probably what your insurance covers and then instead of paying a 20 dollars copay it's 100 bucks for me but i get to put six thousand dollars a year in a savings account Yep. So in my mind, that and that's uh, six thousand dollars I get to reduce my taxes by, as opposed to just saving eighty bucks one time. A month. Yeah. Or one, not, exactly. not not per month. No, not per month. One time. He's only go to the yeah. doctor once a year. Right. For physicals. You know, I get labs run. You know, quarterly, but I don't go actually visit the doctor in person to get those read. I just get the results, and you know, I go over the results. And if something's out of line, then that's when I make an appointment and ask to see the doctor. But if everything's in check, then there's no point in going to see him. And reality Definitely. is you don't even have to really do that anymore because you can just send a message through, yeah. through, a, through a portal, you know? Right. And then through my insurance, like the teledoc visits, are those are covered 100%. So it's right. only the in, in-person stuff. Um, so it kind of works for me. Awesome. But everybody needs their own, you know, value at their own medical Correct. needs. I agree. But yeah. And well, listen, guys. That's all I got to say about that. That's all I got to say about that. You died. Of, she died on a Saturday. <laughs> but <Right>. um, <laughs> he died the on whole, a Monday. He died on a Monday. The whole, <laughs> that, that whole Jenny died on a Monday. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a whole other show, dude, about Jenny being a hoe. Anyway, I want to do a, I want to do a Forrest, a Forrest Gump episode for a free, uh, Flick Friday because that's one of my. I really do like that movie. Oh, I too, man. Watch that today. Maybe we'll maybe we'll maybe we'll do that for next for next Friday, man. Or this Friday coming up, actually, should I say? You know what I mean? We'll do I a force cup. We got we got Beverly Hills Cop Four coming out on Netflix. Oh, mm-hmm. that's right too. So we got to watch on that July third, baby. July third. I don't know. So Foley, Axel Foley. Yeah, but we won't be able to freaking actually talk about that one until the following. No, Friday. we can talk about the old ones and get people prepped. Oh, that's true. We oh, that's true. We sure as shit can. So <laughs> I won't give. I won't uh, fall for the banana in the tailpipe, Mike. So don't even try it. Um, so anyway, <laughs> anyway, guys, listen. Don't forget if you have any BFR therapy or any type of dry needling, go straight to Mike since he's done it. I have not. I'm just going to answer back. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. So <laughs> until I read a little bit more up on it and do it myself, but I'm really intrigued to actually give it a shot. Um, that being I said, cool. head over. Yeah, Mike thinks it's great, so it works for him. So literally, he'll talk about it all day long with you. Trust yeah. me. Um, so that being said, head over to the dailyvm.com where you can follow us on all our socials. YouTube, Rumble, subscribe over there and like. Please help us out. Uh, don't also forget to head over to masondangerbeardco.com where you get 20% off and just use the promo code dailyvm. Mikey, you got anything before we get out of here this glorious Monday? Uh, no, I think everything is great. <laughs> 
No! Everybody needs to have a wonderful day. <laughs> Every day's great, guys. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm seriously good. <laughs> have, have, a, have, a, have a great week, and I'll probably be having a uh, margarita in your honor. Hey, margarita! Anyway, yeah, we'll see you guys on the flip side. See you tomorrow. This is...